Shimon asks, what's with the shofar? Shimon, like everybody who speaks about Rosh Hashanah, I'm going to be long-winded with this one. How does three and a half minutes sound? Okay. First things first. On Rosh Hashanah, we don't abjectly beg forgiveness for our sins. We don't whine. Instead, the highlight of the holiday is the proclamation of God's kingship. Why? Well, obviously, the answer has to do with kingship. I learned what kingship was on my wedding day. In Judaism, tradition states that a groom and bride are king and queen, and they remain king and queen for as long as they treat each other like royalty. But what does treat each other like royalty actually mean? Well, that day, being a king who wanted his jacket, I considered getting it. But then I realized that one of my friends would be honored to get it for me. And that is what makes a king. It is also what makes a strong marriage. Any old dictator can have power, but the servants of a king are honored by their service. By proclaiming God to be king, we are showing that it is an honor to serve him. Because of this, he can know that the blessings he gives us will be used in his service. God can be reassured that our potential will be realized through joy and that tribulation is unnecessary. But how can we demonstrate the joy of service? With the offering of Yitzchak, Avraham is commanded to do something he can't understand. He acts not out of love because he can't love the commandment to kill his own son. Instead, he acts out of fear. His action demonstrates his fear of the Almighty. Of course, Yitzchak was not sacrificed. Instead, a ram, or ayil, was offered in his place. The ayil was trapped there, waiting for them. It was trapped by its horns. While Avraham constrained his own will, the horns constrained the will of the ayil. Forevermore, those horns, from which we make the shofar, represent the fear of God. Shia Khan points out that God breathes our soul into us and we breathe it out through the shofar. But what emerges is not unfiltered. It is filtered by this fear of God. Our own will is filtered from our breath. What emerges is the shadow of the voice of God. It is why the sound of the shofar is so integral, a part of the revelation of Mount Sinai. The voice of the shofar is the best opportunity we have to literally hear Hashem, as we are so often commanded to do. By truly hearing the shofar, by embracing it, by finding joy in it, by internalizing it, and by finding honor in hearing it, we demonstrate that God is our king. When Yaakov blesses his sons, he says Naftali will be a free ayila, a female ayil, and he will give words of shofar. When Moshe blesses the people, he says that the tribe of Naphtali will be full of blessings. Naphtali will express the will of God without being compelled to do so. And so he will be blessed. As we listen to the shofar, we should aspire to Naphtali's example. So close your eyes and listen. And may we all be inscribed in the Book of Life.